Hello guys, so we want to start looking at um, limits at infinity, okay? I already mentioned this a little bit in my last um, lecture, okay? So what you want to find out is what happens, um, so far we're looking at x approaching some number. What happens if this x, this independent variable, increases without bound? It's approaching either positive or negative infinity. Okay, of some function of f of x. What happens to that? How do you find the limit as x approaches infinity of some function? Well, if this is equal to some number, a real number, let's say l, then you say that the limit is, as x approaches positive infinity or negative infinity is equal to that number l. All right? So let's take uh, the function f of x, for example. Um, let x f of x be equal to x. Well, we can uh, sketch this, right? We can sketch this function. Um, if this is x, and this is our f of x, function f of x, which is 1 over x, well, say, if x is 1, if x is 1, this guy will be 1, so we'll let 1 be somewhere right there. If x is 2, 1 over 2 is half. This is now like a half. If x is 3, we have 1 over 3, which is 0.3. Alright? So as x increases, this guy, the function is decreasing. Okay? So the function is doing something like this. Okay? Same way if x is, let's say, negative 1, you're going to have 1 over negative 4, which is negative 1. You're going to be somewhere there. Negative 1 is here. Right? If x is, uh, let's say, negative 2, this would be negative 1 over 2, that's negative half. So at negative 2, you are somewhere there. So the function is going to do something like this. So that is the function 1 over x. Our 0 is here. So you notice something, right? Notice that the limit as x approaches, um, let's say, positive infinity. Right? If it's positive infinity, just write infinity over 1 over x. In other words, as x gets larger and larger, this guy, this function is decreasing and decreasing, it's approaching zero, right? It's horizontal. So as x approaches positive infinity, 1 over x goes to zero. Okay? You see that? And then the same thing as you go, x grows without bound in the negative direction, right? As x becomes larger and larger in the negative direction, the function is getting closer and closer to this horizontal line to zero. So again, the limits as x approaches negative infinity of the function 1 over x is also equal to zero because it's approaching the horizontal line. Okay, so this is one of the easiest functions that we can deal with. And so you should know that because it's a, it will come up a lot, all right, as you do some examples on this. Now, you will also notice that as you approach zero, the function is going, is growing infinitely higher and higher, right? It's growing with a bound, which also means that the limit as x approaches zero from the right-hand side <laughs> of one over x, this guy is growing very big in the positive direction, right? So this is equal to positive infinity. You don't have to print this. You can just leave it as infinity. So as x approaches zero from this side, from the positive side, right, right hand side, right, this function is becoming larger and larger and larger in the positive direction. On the other hand, as you approach zero from this side, right, the function is getting larger but in the negative direction. So the limit as x approaches zero from the left hand side, all right, of 1 over x, this should be called a negative infinity. Okay? So really, when we say limits at infinity, we are usually looking at this, what happens as the independent variable approaches either positive infinity or negative infinity of some function. So suppose that this is not 1 over x, but it's some other function. Can you determine um, the number? Will it be 0 or 1? 
or infinity. What would that be? Okay? Good. So this is an introduction to uh, limits as infinity. We'll look at a couple of laws, right? Just like we did for the, uh, for the other one. Some laws that will help us to determine uh, limits as infinity. So suppose that, so we're going to say limit laws. So limit laws as x approaches plus or minus infinity. All right? What happens? So let's, uh, let's say L, M, and K be some real numbers. Okay, let them be real numbers. And let's suppose that the limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity of some function f of x. Let this be L, and let the limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity of another function g of x. Let this be equal to some number m, another real number m. K is just some constant. Then, just like we did for the other uh, laws, one or a, you can um, you can already see that limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity of a constant, which is a constant. It doesn't matter as x goes to infinity or positive or negative. It's going to remain a constant. Right? We already have the limit as one over for one over x, which is which is zero. So that is that is fine. We don't need that. And limits as x approaches plus or minus infinity of the sum of these two functions, right? You can find the limit for this and limit for that. Okay, the limit for f of x is l, and the limit for this is m. So this would be l plus m. I've shortened it. So this is limit as x approaches plus or minus of that. This is limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity of this time. All right. You can do the same for uh, product. Okay. So the limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity of f of x multiplied by g of x is equal to the limit as x approaches plus or minus f of x. Take this, multiply by the other limit, limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity of g of x. So if you like, this is L multiplied by m. Okay? And you can do the same for um, the ratio, the limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity of f of x over g of x, take the limit of f of x, which will give you L, take the limit of g of x, which will give you M. Well, as long as M is not equal to zero, right? So, you can, you can, you can use this to find the limits um, at infinity, okay? They are very similar to the, um, the other ones that we, uh, we dealt with before. So, for example, so let me get rid of this. For example, to find the limits of uh, this VG, we'll do some more examples. This is just to illustrate these concepts. Find the limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity of let's say 5 plus 1 over x. Yeah? So this you can rewrite as a limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity. Well, let me just do plus, right? Infinity. You don't need to bring your thoughts. So let's get rid of this. Okay? So you have this. So you can, it's a sum of two expressions. So this is phi plus limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x. This is a constant. So it's, it's just phi. It remains a constant. Plus, we just found that the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x is 0. As this becomes larger and larger, the whole expression becomes smaller and smaller, right? We found that in the graph, so this is zero. And so the final limit is just equal to five. Okay? Um, one which I didn't write is if you had uh, a constant times um, a function, you can pull out a constant, right? So if you have the limit 
as x approaches infinity plus or minus of some constant times f of x. We can bring k out, which is a constant plus or minus infinity of the f of x. So the constant times f. Alright? So if you have the limit as x approaches infinity, say negative infinity of tan over x. Yeah? This is the same as tan can be brought out and can find the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 1 over x. We know this is 0, so this is just tan times 0, which is equal to 0. Alright? So this is the introduction to um, limits at infinity. I'll write down a couple of examples that we'll, we'll solve. Um, and there are some techniques that we need to use when we are finding the limit to absolute expression, especially for rational functions, right? For rational functions, um, um, there, there are ways that we could, uh, we could do that. So I'll come, I'll come back and do some more.